Hello everyone. So, we will continue with the topic evenness and what we have discussed in last class that the limit irregularity of different types of fibers. Okay. Now, we have seen that for man made fibers where the variability of fiber mass per unit length is 0. In that case the limit irregularity is of the form of 100 square by n okay. and for cotton this is 106 square by n that is variance and for wool we have seen it is a typically 112 square by n and that this 112 we can achieve we can arrive at by two ways if we know the mass variation of wool which is typically around 50 percent then we achieve 112 percent and also if we consider the diameter variation diameter variation this is coming out to be around 20, 12 25 percent for diameter variation we have to use this equation as we have seen which is 100 square by n multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.0004 multiplied by V d square. So, this is actually empirical equation from there we can achieve the irregularity limit irregularity of wool fiber which is around say 112 square by n where considering the diameter variation of wool as 25 percent. Okay. <coughs> now, for thus for a particular fiber and count of yarn there is a basic irregularity. So, upon which beyond which we our machine cannot be improved. So, the machine there must be some irregularity some actually when the machine is running. So, in textile process the staple fiber production process where the control of fibers are totally negative control. We cannot grip a fiber and lay just after another fiber it is not possible. This fiber moves by either by air by or by uh, roller contact or by frictional contact. So, that due to this inherent limitations of the technology we cannot produce perfectly even material. So, for staple yarn so that the minimum irregularity that is produced that is called limit irregularity and now suppose this machine A is producing is actually handling a fiber, fiber this fiber is it is handling it is handling it is aligning the fibers in this fashion. Now, machine B machine B is aligning fiber same fiber at definitely it will align at different zone definitely it will not be exactly same. Now, if we want to judge the performance of machine A or machine B in that case what we know we know the limit irregularity V r V r machine A V r machine A this they are producing yarn of same linear density exactly same linear density. So, mean number of fibers will be n exactly for both the machine. So, limit irregularity is actually not the part of the machine 
it is a no it does not show the performance of machine, it is the theoretical value which a best possible machine can produce and that is the by say for cotton if it is cotton 106 by under root n and for this machine also machine B, B R B will be exactly same as under root n. So, this limit irregularity is not the performance of it does not show the performance of machine. Now, to show to know the performance of machine we need something else. Suppose, this machine with the limit irregularity of V R A is 106 by N machine A is getting is producing a yarn of say V A. V A is the actual C B percent of yarn and this machine is producing V B. Now, if all other parameters same these parameters are same exactly same. So, number of fibers in the cross section the count same fiber everything is remain same. In that case it is very easy to compare we can compare directly by using this value. If V A is less so V A is less than V B in that case we can say that machine B is performing poorly, but this type of simplified situation is not there will not be there in most of this case. In those cases what will happen in those cases the either number of fibers will be different or type of fiber will be different everything will change. Okay. So, that cannot be exactly same we can have different types of fiber. So, different variety of fiber diff cotton of different variety different lot or different count this will be there different number of fibers in the cross section. So, in that case comparing this vary this value of C V percent produced by the machine will not help. So, we need to have one parameter which will give the actual running performance of the machine. So, we have to have means of judging the spinning performance. Okay. So, that in that way the if we take the ratio of actual irregularity and compare with the limit irregularity in that case we can get the we can on one factor that factor is known as index of irregularity. So, this is the index of irregularity which is nothing but the ratio of actual irregularity V of the yarn or fiber sliver or roving divided by the limit irregularity. So, the index of irregularity I is expressed as V by V R. Okay. And definitely V R will be always less than V actual C V that means, the index of irregularity will always be high. So, in which situation the index of irregularity is unit when V is equal to V R that means, the yarn the machine is running perfectly totally ideally it is running in that case only V will be equal to V R that means, machine is producing the minimum possible variability that means, index of irregularity 1 it is a minimum value and that is the best performing machine and in normal case it is always higher than 1. So, depending on the value irrespective of the type of fiber or the uh, uh, linear density of yarn number of fibers in the cross section. If we compare the I then we can get the value or we can actually come to know the actual performance of the spinning machine. Okay. So, uh, 
hence a value of immunity for this ratio correspond to the limit irregularity the best possible yarn evenness ok. Yarn not only yarn may be sliver or roving ok. The higher the value of i the more irregular the yarn the yarn will be or sliver or roving and poor performance of the spinning machine. After this now we will discuss that addition and reduction of irregularity. Now, here in the formula given in the limit irregularity is the square of C B percent that is the it is the in this form it is known as the relative variance or it is a normal we can say it is a variance ok. Variance is nothing but the C V percent of square of the C V percent. Suppose this is one machine it is may be ring frame or draw frame or roving frame. What we are doing we are feeding one material here this is the material here with a C V percentage of say, say V input and here the after processing processing means it is actually may be drafting may be anything twisting after processing the output material it is a V output this is the C V percent of output material and C V percent of input material and in this process this machine adds a C V of V A, V A is added and that means it is enhanced. So, this V O is more than V I. So, by addition of variance we can have the equation V O square equal to V I square plus V A square. So, the in this way the C V percent gets added up that means this is called addition of irregularity. So, for any process spinning process we must remember it always adds that means in the spinning process when a draw frame a ring frame or roving frame the things the material gets stretched. Typically it gets stretched during stretching process it adds the irregularity during stretching process here it adds irregularity. So, this any process uh, roving frame ring frame or draw frame during the stretching in the drafting roller the it adds the irregularity, but in addition to that we can also reduce the irregularity. So, reduction of irregularity is only by in the spinning process is only by doubling that doubling may be in the form of sliver in the form of roving in the form of yarn or in the form of fiber. Now, in the form of sliver if we uh, double number of sliver it is done in draw frame ok. In the form of roving this is done in it is called siro spinning ok, siro spinning where number of rovings say two roving strands are fed in a ring frame ok. So, this is the roving and this is one roving and then it is getting drafted here. So, the here it is a doubling in the form of yarn 
it is doubled in the in the doubling or plying. In the plying stage yarn is doubled and fiber doubling takes place in various processes. One example is that it is in rotor spinning. In rotor spinning fiber gets doubled at the rotor groove. This is called back doubling and the beauty of rotor spinning process is that it gets drafted at initial stage and back doubling takes place at the later stage at the end. After back doubling no drafting takes place. So, that means that is the one reason that is the main reason for higher evenness in rotor spun yarn. So, that back doubling takes place at the later stage, but if you see the draw frame or roving frame here draw frame or roving frame here the in ring frame. Rowing frame is normally a single stage in ring frame siro spinning and uh, uh, draw frame there fast doubling takes place which reduces the irregularity and then the drafting takes place which adds the irregularity. Similarly, for yarn yarn doubling it, it actually there is no drafting only the doubling takes place. So, reduction in irregularity is there. So, the basic formula is that if the say there are n number of strands n number of strands of input sliver of irregularity say input material of irregularity V input and the combined input combined slide combined material is V say combined. So, V combined that means, C V percent of combined material will be V input by under root n. This is the way the C V percent decreases. So, by using the squares of the coefficient of variation, it becomes possible to add and subtract the irregularities which is produced at various stages in yarn formation. Okay. And as I have mentioned, suppose the C U percent of a sliver is V 1 and it is fed to a machine which leads which adds irregularity V 2. Okay. So, so we can add this and V is the coefficient of variation of the output material say output sliver. So, then it will be the actually square. So, V square equal to V 1 square plus V 2 square from there we can calculate. Okay. Similarly, as I have mentioned the reduction in irregularity can be achieved only by doubling. So, one of the objectives of doubling is to reduce the irregularity and if n strands of material each having same coefficient of variation are doubled, then the coefficient of variation of dub combined strand it is not the output. We must remember this is the C V percent of the combined input material okay. that is a C V of individual strand by under root n. Okay. Now, with this basic concepts now we will start solving some of the practical problems. Okay. Now, first problem let us see which is related to limiting C V. Now, if the most uniform 24 ticks polyester staple fiber yarn 
has a CV percent of 20. So, it has got 20 CV per CV. What is the lowest CV percent one would expect for a 12 tex yarn produced from the same fiber? Okay. The same fiber it is there and limiting CV is asked. So, actually what is the lowest C B percent that is the limiting C B is asked. So, here the problem is very simple here 24 takes polyester twenty four takes polyester is given. So, we do not have any other knowledge. Okay. So, we know that the, this is the 24 takes and it is producing C B of 20. So, the lowest C B, so this is it's and uh, the fiber we do not know, okay. fiber we do not know. So, that means index of limiting C B, so C V R limiting C B will be and as, as it is polyester fiber, polyester fiber it will have so 100. 100 polyester fiber is there, then by under root n, under root n is the. Now, what is given here? This C V value is given because it is it is given that it is a best possi possible yarn, most uniform yarn. So, that means C V 20 is equal to it is a V R it is a limiting C V most uniform when it is told that it is a most uniform yarn that means it is a limiting C V. So, that means it is a 20, 20 is given. So, from there we can calculate under root n equal to 5. So, n equal to 25, 25 is the n value. So, n 1, so number of fiber n 1, so here it is given n 1 say, n 1 is the 25. Okay. Now, so we know this for 24 takes, the number of fibers in the cross section is 25. Now, the question is that what will be the limiting C V for yarn? will with 12 takes come. So, V R say 12 takes this is asked. So, for 24 takes number of fiber theoretically if it is 25. So, for 12 takes same fiber is used that theoretically the number of fiber will be 12.5 although number of fiber cannot be in fraction, but for theoretically average mean number of fibers if we see it is 12.5. So, if we know the number of fiber and if we know it is a polyester then we can calculate the limiting C B by using the formula 100 by under root 12.5. So, this is the limiting C B for the 12 tex yarn. So, for and we can calculate the fiber text also. From there also we can calculate this is the number of fiber in the cross section is 0.25 and then we can calculate the takes of the fiber with for 24 takes 25 fibers are there. So, fiber text is 0.96 and from there we can calculate also the number of fiber in the cross section. So, it is coming out to be 12.5. So, if we know the number of fiber in the cross section, then the limiting C V will be for 24 12.5 fibers will be 28.28 percent. What does it show? This problem shows that if we have less number of fibers, so if we draft more, okay then we cannot control the fiber. 
we cannot control the evenness. Evenness has to go out uh, above, it's, it has to increase. So, it, if you are making half, so that has it is from 20 percent to it has come out it is a 28.28 percent that is mainly due to the number of fiber in the cross section. Now, second part of this problem is that what would be the C V percent of 4 ply yarn produced from 12 text yarn. So, 12 text yarn is there. Now, this is the limiting C V. So, that is minimum C V what would be the minimum C V produced by the this yarn. So, now what we will do we will use the reduction formula. Reduction formula is that for 4 ply yarn produced from 12 text fiber 12 text yarn will be it will be nothing but 28.28 under root 4 because it is 4 ply. So, this has come out to be 14.14. So, this is uh, the simple numerical, but this from there from this numerical one can get clear idea the how to use the limitive irregularity, okay? how to calculate the limitive irregularity. Our next numerical is that it is addition and reduction of C V percent, it is related to that. So, two roving with C V percent of 8 percent C V are fed into spinning zone that is side row spinning and if the spinning unit adds additional 8 percent C V what will be the output yarn C V. Okay. It is it is again simple because we have added two rovings of 8 percent C V. So, the additional addition uh, formula will add. So, two roving. So, this will be reduction. So, two rovings are doubled. So, that means 8 under by under root 2 and again we are adding 8 percent. So, this is this this here it is a reduction formula then addition formula will be C V feed square by C V add square under root okay? because C V output. So, it is a simple 8 divided by under root 2 square plus 8 square. So, it is coming out to be 9.8 percent. So, if we feed two rovings of 8 percent C V and then we add during drafting another 8 percent. So, effective C V of the yarn will be 9.8 percent. This example actually gives a simple example which shows the addition and reduction of irregularity. Next, next is that the same what we have got 9.8 percent C V of yarn. Now, in the next stage same yarn we are plying three times three ply yarn produced using this single yarn will be approximately 9.8 under root 3. So, the, the we can actually try different combinations, but the concept is very simple straightforward concept it is coming out to be 5.66 percent. Next again it is uh, related to the addition and reduction of C V percent 8 ends of sliver each having C V percent of 6 percent are doubled and draw frame add is actually this and drawn to produce resultant sliver of same hand. Okay. So, it is a 6 it is actually 6 8 slivers we are feeding and typically we are giving 8 drafts so theoretically and during that it is it adds 2.12 percent. So, if the draw frame produce introduce 2.12 percent C V. So, during drafting it is actually introducing 2.12 C V the C V percent of resultant sliver would be approximately like coefficient of variation of individual sliver, individual feed material that is 8 slivers we are feeding. So, it is coming out to be 2.121 
this is the input material not the saliva. Eight slivers together at the back of the uh, draw frame just before the uh, drafting roller. So, after doubling it is coming out to be 1.121 this 1.121 thick material of 8 slivers are na again drafted and drafting adds again 2.12. Okay. So, this it is adding 2.12 that means the addition formula input plus C B addition and we are getting a C B of approximately 3 percent. So, output draw frame sliver C B is approximately 3 percent even after the addition of 2.12 percent it has actually almost half to that of individual draw frame sliver. So, that this, this is the example where one can get clear idea, clear idea how the this how the C V percent of slivers are reducing the five slivers are getting uniform. We normally say draw frame actually makes the sliver uniform, but if people argue it also adds. So, one can uh, can, uh, can try to see whether actually it is uh, reducing or not. Now, if we want to reduce it further in the same machine if it is adding 2.1. So, only way has to is to re increase the number of doubling number of doubling. Okay. If we make it 10 it will be further reduced in that way. So, here it shows that draw frame actually reduce the C U percent of the material. Okay. Now, next problem here it is again related to addition and reduction of C B. Here we just see consider the following particulars of a spinning line means it consists of roving frame card draw frame total spinning line this is the process okay, input line producing 30 count 30 takes yarn from 150 millitex polyester fiber. So, this is given and mass C V of card sliver the card sliver if we take the C V percent is coming out to be 3 percent mass C V added at draw frame 2 percent mass C V added at spe speed frame it is 3 percent mass C V added at ring frame it is 7 percent number of doubling at draw frame 6, six doubling and number of draw frame passage is given 1. So, normally we give 2 draw frame passages here in the specifically it is written it is a 1 passage. Now, from this data we have to calculate the C V percent of roving and index of irregularity of yarn this is the actually our problem. So, for calculating index of irregularity of yarn we have to calculate the in C V percent of yarn also. So, okay. now let us see how to go about it. So, 30 takes of yarn from 150 millitex. So, from there what we can do we can calculate the number of fibers in the yarn cross section. So, number of fiber in the yarn cross section will be that we will calculate. So, mass C V of input draw frame material. So, what is the in so 3 percent is the card sliver. So, this card slivers so such how many slivers we feed such a 6 slivers 6 slivers of 3 percent 3 6 card slivers of 3 percent C percent we double at the draw frame. So, what will be the input material C B it will be 3 by under root 6 it is coming out to be 1.225 percent. The mass C B of input material at draw frame okay. and what will be the mass C B of output material we know how much draw frame is adding. So, what is the value here value is draw frame mass it is added it is 2 percent it is adding that means mass C B will be it is under root this 1.225 square 
plus 2 square. So, 100 root 1.225 2 square plus 2 square it is coming out to be 2.345 percent. So, this is the mass C B of sliver drop M sliver. Now, then mass C B of roving so you at roving frame. So, uh, ro what is the mass C B of roving? So, this is the drop frame. So, in roving in sweet frame we feed one sliver of 2.345 C V percent and the C V percent added in roving is it is a 3 percent C V it is adding. So, this value will be the square of under root the square of 2.345 plus 3 square. So, 3 percent is added. So, mass C V at speed frame okay, is 2 per that, that is mass C V input of the speed, uh, speed frame the C V input of speed frame is 2.345 percent. So, it if we add the square and take the under root it will come out to be the, the this is the C B output what is the C B output of draw frame is equal to C B input of speed frame. So, same value now this value is 3.808. So, that means, the after drafting from 2.345 percent it has come out to be 3.80 is 8 percent it is added due to the addition at the rate at, at 3 percent. Okay. Next, next is that. So, what we have the our problem our requirement of the mass C V of roving. So, that is uh, mass C V of roving is calculated this is the mass C V of roving. Now, index of irregularity we have to calculate index of irregularity of the yarn that means, ring frame we have to calculate. So, to calculate the index of irregularity of yarn mass C V output of ring frame what is the mass C V output of ring frame we know the roving frame and we know the addition. So, mass C V added at ring frame is 7 percent we are adding and mass C V input of uh, ring frame that is the roving frame we have at roving mass C V was 3.808 percent. So, if we add this to the square of this 7 percent and square of 3.808 percent. So, it is come and take the under root it will be 7.969. So, this is the mass C V actual C V of yard what is we have produced. Now, to get the index of irregularity we must calculate the limit irregularity and to get to calculate limit irregularity we must know the number of fibers in yarn cross section. <coughs> now, we know that C V this is the C V output of roving uh, ring frame that is yarn uh, C V and index of irregularity is C V output of ring frame by limiting C V at, at ring frame at the yarn stage. So, what is the limiting C V? Limiting C V is 100 divided by under root n because it is polyester fiber is given. If it is given the cotton because cotton we do not have to tell anything we know the value 106, but and for wool it will be 112, but if we specify other fibers other natural then we have to specify this value okay, this constant value we have to give it is a man made fiber we will take directly as 100. So, the number of fibers we can calculate if we know the yarn takes so, yarn text is given here and fiber text also is given. So, yarn text was 30 text it was given and fiber millitex was given 150 millitex. So, it is coming out to be 0 0.150. So, there will be 
200 fibers in the yarn cross section. So, if you know the 200 fibers here, we can calculate the C V limit. So, what is C V limit? It is 100 by under root 200, it is a 7.07. .07. This is the C V limit, and if we know the C V limit and we know the yarn C V, actual C V, so we can calculate the index of irregularity. So, index of irregularity of yarn is C V output, which is 7.969 and C V limiting C V, which is 7.07. .07, okay. So, the ratio will give us the idea of 1.127. So, if we know this value for range of production, range of machines, so we can compare. So, the, the higher the value of index of irregularity, poorer will be the performance of the machine. Okay. This will be this will give uh, a direct indication of the actual performance of the machine. Okay. Next problem is that here we will calculate, we will try to calculate the, know the performance of a machine, two rings uh, ring frames are there, we want to calculate. Now, ring frame 1 is producing 30 ticks polyester yarn with C V of 10 percent from 1.5 denier fiber, because this problem has been made very simple, but we can have we can give the problem with all the previous data. So, here it is a directly it is a given, but this C V percent of 10 percent one can actually calculate from by knowing the addition C V of at different stages and and uh, the input slide input material C V. So, that way this C V is directly given and it is given that uh, count of yarn that 30 takes and fiber denier is given 1.5 denier fiber. And another ring frame ring frame 2 which is producing again 30 30 takes polyester yarn. So, same polyester yarn it is producing and it is producing a C V of 8.5 percent. Okay. But in that case that ring frame 2 what we are doing we are using a different fiber at fiber of 1 denier fiber earlier we are using 1.5 denier and if we are happy with that that ring frame 2 is producing even yarn its C V percent is 8.5 whereas, the ring frame 1 is producing a C V of 10 percent. So, if we are happy that with the fact that ring frame 2 is producing better yarn then we are wrong, because in ring frame 2 we have given a different fiber we have actually used a finer fiber. So, in that case to compare this performance of these two ring frames we have we have to get the index of irregularity. So, index of irregularity the lower the index of irregularity better will be the performance of the machine. So, we cannot judge the performance of machine by output C V. Output C V is the products quality products, but performance uh, of the machine we have to judge by the index of irregularity. Okay. So, for ring frame 1, so actual C V is given 10 percent okay, V 1 and number of fibers in the cross section is n. So, that we can calculate n 1. So, n 1 is nothing but 30 takes and 9 denier and it is a it is a individual fiber is sorry individual fiber is 9 denier and we can first convert it to denier 30 takes is nothing but 270 denier 30 multiplied by 90 and divided by 1.5 parse fiber denier it is coming out to be 180 fibers in the cross section. Now, if we know the fiber number of fiber in the cross section and as we know it is a polyester fiber we can get the value calculate the value of limit irregularity by using formula 100 by under root n 1 number of fiber 
in the cross section. So, it is coming out 100 by 13.4 that is under root 180 is 13.4 and the limit irregularity of the machine 1 the yard 1 it is a, it's a limit what is a 7.46 and the actual irregularity it is producing 10 percent. So, we can calculate the index of irregularity of machine 1 ring frame 1 it will be 1.34. So, the machine the ring frame 1 which is producing 10 percent C V it is produce it is giving it is uh, index of irregularity is 1.34. Now, let us see what happened to the ring frame 2. So, index of irregularity of yarn from ring frame 1 is 1.34. Now, let us see for ring frame 2 again in the same way actual irregularity is 8.5 percent that is V 2 number of fibers in the yarn cross section N 2 will the same way will produce will get 30 multiplied by 9 that means, 270 denier and it is it is using 1 denier fiber. So, there will be 270 number of fibers. So, similarly we can calculate the limit irregularity of yarn it is a of this is this will be a 2 ring frame 2 it will be 6.1 that is 100 by under root 270 which is nothing but under root 270 means 16.4. So, it is 6.1 is the limit irregularity and actual irregularity is 8.5 percent then we can compare we can actually calculate the index of irregularity is this one okay. this is the index of irregularity sorry this is this should be V 2 and this will be V 2 R not V 1 R. So, this is nothing but 8.5 percent by 8.5 by 6.1 and it is 1.39. So, ring frame 1 was producing yarn with higher irregularity higher C u percent and ring frame 2 was producing yarn with lower C u percent. But if we see the performance of a machine, the ring frame 1 is having lower index of irregularity. That means, the performance of ring frame 1 is much better than ring frame 2. So, looking at the C V percent of yarn product, we cannot judge the performance running performance of machine to calculate to actually for product final product C u percent or u percent is ok. But if we judge the want to judge the running performance of a particular machine we must go for the measurement of index of irregularity ok. So, the higher value of index of irregularity in ring frame 2 shows that it has poor spinning performance ok. That is the our conclusion. Now, now we will see another a practical problem of calculating the index of irregularity at different spinning processes. Now, this is actually this process is actually semi or state spinning system in a semi hot state spinning system where we use we can in hot state spinning we can use either wool blend 100 percent wool or even man made fiber. What is hot state system where we deal with the long staple fiber which normal re, re cotton spinning system does not actually it cannot handle this long step system long fiber length. So, in hot state system we use large number of drop frame. So, uh, here you can see a drop frame 1, drop frame 2, drop frame 3, 
a different level of drop frame we can see and different number of combers we can use, but here as we are using man made fiber. So, comber is absent otherwise we can use comber for say wool blend. Okay. So, the problem here it is given this is actually taken from a practical uh, problem industry data. The following table gives the relevant processing detail used in the production of 32 takes yarn span from 152 millimeter. So, this you can see the length of the fiber shows it is not the cotton system, cotton system can handle maximum up to 51 or to some extent 54 or 60 million not more than that. Here we are dealing with 152 millimeter, but the length of the fiber will not actually come into our calculation, because in index of irregularity calculation or C U percent calculation we do not take we do not consider the length of the fiber and 0.5 takes man made fiber on a semi or state spinning system. Okay. It is a coarse man made fiber it is a 0.5 takes okay. together with the C U percent at each product. Now, this is the process so, first draw frame we give draft 8 doubling 8 and C U percent of drop drawn sliver is 3.4. Second drawing draft is given 9.37, doubling is given 6, and C U percent of the product, second drop frame product is 2.8. Third drop frame draft is 5.7, doubling is 2, 2 slivers are uh, processed, fed and the C U percent we get it is 5.5 percent. Roving 10 draft that is doubling there is no doubling 1 strand 7.5. Spinning that is ring frame we use 1 14.1 is the draft 1 doubling and it is a 14.9 is the C V. Now, what we have to calculate? We have to calculate the index of irregularity and addition of irregularity at each stage. So, that at each stage we have to calculate. Now, we will go we will see the stages how to proceed. Now, the solution is that given yarn count is 32 takes we know the yarn count is given it is a 32 takes 32 takes yarn count is given and fiber takes is also given. So, linear density of fiber is given 0.5 takes and type of fiber is given it is a man made fiber. So, from here we can calculate the index of irregularity. So, number of fibers in the yarn cross section is 64. Okay. Similarly, we can calculate the limit irregularity it is a 100 divided by 64 it is coming out to be 100 divided by 8 means 12.5, 12.5 is the limit irregularity and also we know the C V percent of yarn from the table we know the C V percent of yarn was given 14.9. So, the index of irregularity it is 12, it is divided by 12.5 which is limit irregularity, index of irregularity of ring frame is 1.19 and C V of input material of roving is given it is a 7.5. So, C V of input material is given it is a 7.5 and C V of output material is also known it is a 14.9. 14.9 is the yarn C V and roving C V was give supplied it is a 7.5. So, addition of C V we can calculate uh, C B of input material addition of C B is we can we can calculate uh, using the earlier formula it is a it is coming out to be 12.87 that means C B of output material equal to C B of input material plus C B addition. So, it will so this minus this will be the C B of addition. 
So, addition of C B is 12.87 and 1.19 is the index of variability. So, we can use this data to fill the table gradually. So, now we have added two, two columns, three columns. In, in fact, we have added three columns. So, column this column text was not given and this 32 text is given the linear density of yarn was given and addition of C V in spinning is 12.87 and it is a 1.19 is the C V index of irregularity. And now, now coming to the roving stages in roving we can calculate the count of roving if we know the draft the draft what was given is in spinning draft is 14.1, 14.1 draft is given and count is given 32 text. So, we can calculate the count of roving. So, count of roving is 32 multiplied by 14.1 it is a 451 text, fiber linear density is same, same fiber 0.5. So, type of fiber man made. So, for roving if we try to solve it is a number of fiber in the roving cross section in the same way we it is coming out to be 451.2 divided by 451 takes of roving divided by takes of fiber it is a 902 and limit irregularity is 100 by 902 of roving it is a 3.3 and limit uh, index of irregularity because ro uh, roving irregularity value is given it is a 7.5 percent roving C B was given. So, index of irregularity of roving is 2.27 and C B of output material that is roving C B. So, in this is the C B of input material of uh, uh, this is the in uh, roving C B that is and C B of input material what is this? This is the C B of drop frame sliver hard drop frame sliver it is given which is the input material for roving and C B index of irregularity is given as C B of output material that is roving C B is 7.5. So, output material roving C B is 7.5. So, from there we can calculate the addition of irregularity in roving process it is coming out to be 5.1 percent. So, this we can add again to the this table. So, 450 takes 5.1 percent is added and index of irregularity is 2.27 percent. Now, we can go back to another process uh, the next process that will be last. So, third drop frame sliver similarly we know the draft we know the uh, this uh, uh, that is, uh, this is the count. So, 451 is the 451 count multiplied 451.2 multiplied by 10 is the third drop frame sliver count because the 451.2 that is for this is approximately 450 this is actually 451.2 and if we multiply by 10 that is in the drove roving uh, roving the draft is given this is the takes in roving. So, if we draft if we multiply by 10 it will be actually 451.2 in the table it is placed as 450. So, 451.2 text is the uh, drop frame fiber text and 0 0.5 fiber, fiber density. So, the number of fibers in the drop frame fiber cross section will be 9024, okay. 4512 divided by 0 0.5. So, we can calculate the index of irregularity of drop frame sliver is 1.05. So, 100 divided by under root 0 0.9024 is the number of fibers and index of irregularity is coming out to be 5.5 divided by 1.01 which is index so limit irregularity and 5.5 is the irregularity of the third drop frame sliver C B percent. So, and this is the limit C B. So, index of irregularity is 5.23 and C B of output material which is why C B of output material is actually output material C B is 2.8. So, 
So, we can see it is a 2.8 is the sorry 2.8 is, is the input material. So, in third drop frame saliva third drop frame will feed the input material of say second drop frame saliva, output material of second drop frame saliva, which is 2.8. So, this is the index of irregularity and C B limit is known. So, C B limit of C B percent of input material in drop frame okay. in uh, third drop frame third drop frame what is the drop number of doubling in third drop frame number of doubling is 2, but the sliver which you are feeding from the second drop frame second drop frame sliver the in the C V percent is 2.8 and it is under root divided by under root 2 number of doubling it is coming out to be 1.98 is the C V percent of input material and C V percent of output material which is the uh, which is nothing but 5.5 5.5 then we can you we can calculate the addition of irregularity in the third drop frame which is 5.13 and we will put we will add this values to this table. So, we will keep on adding this values we can fill this table. Okay. So, this numerical it gives all the flavor where doubling is there, drafting is there, we can calculate the index of irregularity, we can calculate the addition of irregularity we from the number of fibers. So, this if we can try, if we can try to solve this type of numerical our total concept will be clear. And for first and second drop frame passage this will be your homework, you can try and you can try to solve this problem. Okay. Until then, we will stop here for the day. Thank you.